When you look at a tiny baby, they're really dealing with their physiology. Imagine floating in space with all your needs looked after, then suddenly you come through the birth canal and you have to eat and you have to pee and you have to poo and you haven't had much experience doing that and you get funny sensations in your stomach that we know the baby's hungry but the baby doesn't know. So those first weeks of life are really a physiological sorting out with the parent available to be able to calm the baby, to think through what might happen. So within that short space of time, usually the physiology is sorted out. The baby becomes familiar with eating and peeing and pooing. The parent becomes familiar with the baby's signals and gains some confidence in being able to do these things. And a little bit of a rhythm develops between the two. It's important to hold, talk to, and touch babies because babies, especially young uh, babies, young children, are absorbing in those first few years of life all of these varieties of experience. And we know that their brains, the circuitry in their brains, the architecture of their brains, are really built sort of from the ground up. And these early relationships of interacting with their mother and their father, being touched, being spoken to, being read to, all of these experiences fundamentally affect the, the growth and the maturation of, of circuitry, of, of uh, connections within the brain that then last a lifetime. So the child's ability to learn, to develop relationships, to respond to the world in a variety of ways are really built from these early experiences of what we think of as kind of serve and return of this two-way street between a parent and a, and a baby or a young child. One of the neatest things, what a baby sees when you're calming a baby and helping put them into a quiet alert state, is of course the face of the person who's holding them. And babies love faces from the moment they're born. Sometimes they focus better than other times, but that's a distance that's ideal for the development of the visual system at that point in development. And they scan those faces. So they learn about faces in general, and they learn about the faces of different people in their worlds. When babies look at faces, they like all the features of faces, they like eyes, but a newborn baby is likely to scan the most at the areas of high contrast. So you're trying to look into their eyes, and sometimes they'll look back into your eyes, but more often than not, they're going to be scanning your hairline. There's high contrast there. They explore all the features of a face, and they can see them even when they're looking at, at the hairline, but it's, it's not that the baby isn't good at making eye contact if you see that happening in a newborn baby. And one of the things that's really interesting, first shown by Andy Meltzoff, is that from the moment they're born, babies will imitate some of these facial gestures. He showed it first with tongue protrusion. So if you stick your tongue out over and over again at a newborn baby who is looking at your face, you'll gradually see a little bit of a tongue. Or if you open your mouth, you'll see a little bit of imitation. So there's some kind of communication going on and a kind of dyadic interaction um, from the very beginning. It's really important that parents do what I've seen you two doing. Talk to their babies. You said Ethan likes to be talked to all the time. Mm -hmm. and, and he really is learning.
the preciousness of the present moment is very, very powerful. And babies really are very much in the present moment. So they invite us to be part of that dance. And so even if you don't happen to have uh, the capacity to take off time from work, for instance, if you're the father, the more you can be at home, the better. The more you can let work be aside for a time, you know, or, or don't take on extra work, but to, to take this on as the, as the new opportunity and challenge, the, the better that would be. When he was like uh, two months old, around there. Yeah, around yeah. two months, yeah. He's starting to do more initiating and like uh, interact with us yeah, more. Yeah, they can respond like when you yeah. play with them and then they will just laugh, like, mm -hmm. yeah. When we first uh, came home from the hospital, um, we see baby smile, but with his eyes closed, so kind of like we're not sure whether he's really responding. But then when he first responds to you, that's uh, really memorable, like it's very happy. One of the remarkable things, one of the many remarkable things about the human newborn is that they come sort of pre-programmed to do this kind of mirroring of the, of the emotions that they see on another's face. One example of the kind of responsive, nurturing, relational activity between a parent and a child is this showing an emotion, reading an emotion, and the exchange back and forth that can even happen with a, with a pre-verbal child who's not able to use language yet, but who uh, is able to have a whole interaction with a father or a mother um, based only on this exchange of facial expression. What's really interesting is that although um, Ethan isn't speaking at all yet and he's not likely to produce his first word for many months, he does listen to your voice. And in listening to your voices and the speech around him, he's actually learning a lot about language. So every time you talk to him, he's listening. He learns about the rhythm of Cantonese and English. He learns about the sounds in each. and We document that in some of our studies. He learns about your voice, that's my dad, that's my mom, as opposed to other people in the world and who he can trust. Um, and then gradually he starts pulling out words. And what's really interesting is in the presence of a word, he'll explore other things in the world more. So when he looks at a tree, he'll see it and it's beautiful. But when you say tree, there's a lot of research that shows that he'll look at that tree differently. He'll pull out the features and that's what will allow him to later learn that trees are made up of trunks and bark and leaves and that there's a color green and a color brown. So in the presence of language, babies actually explore more. Parents can laugh with their babies. They can mimic their baby's vocalizations. So if the baby is going ba, 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 the mom or the dad can say ba, ba, ba back and, and begin to develop these kind of back and forth contingent responses that, that are a part of how the baby learns to use language and how the brain begins to develop in the areas that subserve language. The touching and the stroking, uh, the way you talk to him, um, even though babies don't understand language the way we do, they learn a lot from your tone of voice and um, that's really the foundation for them beginning their language. So talking to them even when they aren't speaking back or seeming to understand is, is, is a great thing you're doing. So what is 
what's the best thing that we can do then to help him with language development? Exactly what you're doing is to be responsive to him, to take turns in conversations, to speak to him um, in a way that keeps him interested in what you're talking about. Each baby gets used to um, a number of things that they particularly like. Singing is good because it, uh, your body actually vibrates as you sing and they uh, uh, sense that vibration. Uh, some people say it reminds the baby of the feeling the heartbeat when they were, they were in the womb. How does he respond when you sing? What oh, he notice? loves it. And he, he, he starts to, you know, he coos along and tries to imitate what I'm saying. And this is why speech and cooing and singing is actually good right from the word go, because mm. babies come out ready to learn, ready to experiment and try things. I guess he really likes listening to my voice because he's been hearing it since, you know, way before he emerged into the world. So he can, he can hear my voice from me. If somebody else is holding him and I'm in the other room, he always like looks towards sure. it. And trying to figure out where I am and stuff. So. Yeah, it's another example of the way babies are learning the whole time. They, ha they take these cues that we may not think are terribly relevant, but mm -hmm. uh, they process them and they're very important for the day-to-day -day development. The same with uh, the words you use. He won't understand them, but he'll understand the tone and the yeah. rhythm. things you're doing are perfect as well. I mean, you read to him, so that gives him um, richer input than he might hear just in those on face kinds of interactions. At the same time, teaching him about books, that they're fun, that they're wonderful. Even the experience of, of a book going from left to right in our culture and that it involves turning pages is something that children don't know if they don't have that kind of exposure. The way that you two just talk to each other when you're around him as well, that gives him the richest vocabulary of all. Mm. And he's not going to learn those words at this age, but he's going to like hearing your voices. It's creating a safe environment. My mom and dad care about each other. Talking is part of what we do. Elaborating on the world around us is part of what we do. Even when babies are first born, they're really ready ready to learn, ready to explore. Uh, and you see now he's communicating. He's telling us what he thinks about things, even though he's not using words. The, uh, the physical expressions and the, the way he's using his voice, his whole body language is, uh, is um, really practicing uh, communication so that when he's ready to move into language, that will be a natural, natural transition. We certainly are aware that there are parental gender-specific influences. First of all, we know that, that dads are just as important as mothers in attending to and caring for their children, even their young infants. It's very important that fathers understand that they have just as crucial a role to play in the lives of their children as those children's moms do. But it's also true that the gender of the parent and the gender of the child at certain stages of development makes uh, a difference. Little boys look to their dads and learn from their dads in ways that are powerfully influential in their acquisition of their roles in life, of their future roles as uh, fathers and parents in their own families. Being a first-time mom is being full of surprises 
to see uh, my husband interact with my daughter. I mean, he's a responsible guy, I'm still in love with him and all of that, but I would have never guessed that he would be such a great dad and he's embraced the change so beautifully. And so it's surprising to see the dad he is and the mom that I am. It's been wonderful. He wakes her up first thing in the morning. He's the one who looks at her every single day in the morning. He plays with her, he reads a lot to her. And if I'm worked up about work or something like that, he talks to her and tells her that mommy is just worked up because there's something coming up, but she'll be fine soon. So he does a lot of comforting and that's been great. Children are little sponges for what they see their parents doing in the, in, in the life of the family around them. So seeing their dads read is an important influence on their interest in and willingness to acquire the ability to read. Having their fathers read to them is a very important, not only emotional interaction, uh, social interaction with their parent, but also cognitively begins to help them understand the pleasure and the, and the fun of, uh, of reading. A father who cannot read can still interact with that child in ways that are important and helpful to the child. Uh, simply having a children's book and turning the pages and telling whatever story the father wants to tell about the illustrations in that book is a, is a tremendously helpful thing for a little child. We do read to him throughout the day. And every night, so it's part of his routine, so it, that way it's easy to remember and to do um, around bath time. So after he gets a bath, then he gets read to. He reads board books now because he likes to tear them and eat them. But we started reading to him before three months, probably around two months old. Actually before then, because your mother read On the Night You Were Born to him. That was his first book was when he was three weeks. three weeks old, yeah. He likes the books when they're it's like starts with bubbles, bubbles on your nose, and then we go through all the different parts. Bubbles, bubbles on your toes. It's neat when they can refer to body parts, and then you can touch them or touch his touch, knees. Yeah, and touch his knees, the different yeah. body parts. I mean, that's perfect. You have his attention engaged. He's in there with you in that conversation. And then at the end of each sentence, you were using the word that labeled the body part, and you were using it with an input-directed type intonation. I think that is ideal for language acquisition.